What's his history with derivatives? Well, he has a checkered history uh, with derivatives, I'd say. First of all, one of the best stories in the book is when, uh, is from 1987, right after the crash of 87, and it's a letter that he wrote to uh, Congressman Dingell, in which he John warned, Dingell, right, Michigan, right, absolutely, in which he warned about what could happen uh, with um, uh, with uh, index trading f futures, index trading futures trading of index, which uh, was just then being uh, uh, about to be approved by Congress and was approved by it. And Warren warned about that, and if he had been listened to, I think we would be far better off today. Uh, and he has always so that's an early thing about derivatives. So you saw go ahead. I think I I think I actually wrote the letter in eighty yeah. two. But, but oh, you wrote the letter yeah. in eighty two. Yeah. But it, we, we we printed it in eighty seven after a the crash. After the troubles came. Yeah. Right. So you wrote yeah. the letter, but it wasn't printed. It was printed in eighty seven. Yeah. Fortune yeah. printed it and and uh, and ran it. Yeah. Um, but then on derivatives, um, uh, what I say about Warren is that he really cannot. Ignore securities that have are mispriced. I think that he you, has. You, you notice that? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I, you know, he doesn't go out and buy um, uh, raw cotton or anything like yeah. that, or not very often. Uh, but um, but derivatives in his eyes have often been mispriced. So on and the that's one hand, for him. on the one hand, he'll be writing in the annual report warning about derivatives, and over on the other hand, he'll be buying those that are clearly mispriced. Mr. Buffett, yeah. I plead you. Yeah. Well, I, I, we have two hundred. I, I know every single derivative we own, and they're all the product of my purchase. Now, we, we bought a company called General Re, which had 23000 and it cost us $400 million before we got out of those. And we look, we tried to liquidate every one. There's still a few left you outstanding. as fast as you could. Absolutely. Yeah. But the 200 and some that I picked, uh, you know, I think we'll, we'll make money on. But I, 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 I'm familiar with every one of those. I think when you have an instant, well, Lehman had probably a million I mean and and you get huge counterparty risks well, at General Re when we went in we had over 900 counterparties I didn't even know who three or four hundred of them were I couldn't pronounce their names I mean that is not yeah. my idea of prudent finance <laughs> but but doesn't uh, Dodd Frank speak to derivatives it does to some extent but I'm like Warren I haven't read the whole thing either and I have not written about it in which case I really would have an opinion but I, I, I could not express a strong the, the Volcker rule appeals to me. Does it appeal to you? Yeah, it appeals to me. It's the right thing. In general, yeah. I think I think I know, but I think I think the more banks stick with just pure banking, the better yeah. I like it. I mean they have a franchise from the United States government and that people look at their deposits as guaranteed by the yeah, US right, government. Right, it's not right. totally correct, but that's what they and and when you have the ability to take in money from people who feel that they have the the US government behind it, they're gonna give you money whether you're credit worthy or not. And therefore, you you need some real regulation to make sure that people don't go wild with that franchise. And and uh, banks uh, with that with those funds and with that trust uh, can do some pretty extreme things, particularly when they've got the, the upside belongs to the management. I don't worry about moral hazard with stockholders. The stockholders got killed in all these banks, but the management's you know they they made lots of money and and they didn't they didn't go away broke.